Hi, Ray here. It's great to see you again. And I say again because this fireside chat is made primarily with my return viewers in mind. With a special nod to those who have recently encouraged me to persevere in the face of doubt. And, though they're unlikely to stumble on it, this is also dedicated to the trolls that uh, often rise from whatever cave they inhabit to leave insults in the comments. I've heard it said that you know you're making progress on YouTube <laughs> when the trolls arrive, so perhaps there is hope after all. Excuse me while I put on my surly cap. <laughs> There seems to be a common obsession among these brilliant minds, ignoring the possibility that we're talking about a single miscreant using multiple anonymous accounts, and that is that they seem to focus on my advanced years. And it's true. I'm old. Deal with it. <laughs> In fact, my birthday is on the horizon. In two weeks, I'll be 69 years young. So I'm sorry to disappoint the recent malcontent who commented, you must be at least 90, <laughs> as if that would be some kind of failure on my part. I've been deleting most of these ageist attacks, but here's an example of the kind of genius that drops in every week or two. This one's from someone who writes under what I presume is the pseudonym Confit, unless they really are some kind of fruit preserve. What a ridiculous nitpicking effort, old man. The camera is legendary like the X-Pro one you are clutching at straws. And I'm not sure, going on the punctuation, whether it's me or the X-Pro one that's doing the straw clutching here. Fair enough. At your age, you probably need IBIS and a better viewfinder, but the rest is out of rubbish, buddy. Again, this is from the comments section of a video I made detailing my complaints with the Fujifilm X-Pro2 camera, which triggered an avalanche of tirades from its hardcore fans on YouTube and other social media platforms where it got passed around. I've mentioned this shitstorm in another fireside chat. I should point out it also led to a viral spike in traffic. It wasn't designed as clickbait. Well, maybe a tiny bit. My intention was to highlight a number of design failures that have been widely discussed on the interwebs by other owners. I'm not the first to have complained about things like spinny controls and the badly conceived retro ISO dial. Long before I made this video, I'd passed my thoughts on to a regional Fuji rep who at least politely agreed with some of my criticisms and promised to pass them along to R&D. Not that they were addressed in the X-Pro3. But I'm really not making this video to rehash those mechanical issues. It's just that in the context of a camera designed to look like a real legendary camera, say built three quarters of a century ago with the advent of the Leica, it's pretty hilarious for X-Pro2 defenders to be using the term old as an insult. The friggin' camera is made to look old. <laughs> not that, uh, a sense of irony is a strong point with these people. And here it is, recording this view. I guess old man is seen as an insult in this schizoid 21st century. Another boomer era reference. And nobody does write songs like that today. <laughs> hmm, who wrote that friggin' song Forever Young and popularized the idea that you shouldn't trust anyone over 30? <laughs> who was that guy? The term as invective is something I fielded for the last decade or so. When it happens face to face, I can see the um, insult hurlers are to a person in their 20s and 30s. But I'm not going to commit the same kind of ageist generalization about generations. This is not intended to be an old man rant about these kids nowadays. Okay, millennials. Apologies to the majority of young people like my benevolent nephews and nieces, and my daughter, who also respects elders. I can also see that the majority of views on this channel are from the demographic, including 25 to 34 years and 35 to 44 years. My age group only accounts for 12% of traffic. Come on, old fogies, get with the program. I'm not saying 
that I'm an example of that proverbial wise old sage, that I should be venerated based on the number of years I've managed to dodge the reaper. And I'm not claiming any kind of photographic superiority. Despite a CV, which lists my accomplishments over the 40 years or more that I've been messing with cameras. Look, I'm not too old or too proud to learn from my juniors, and I often do. I'm sure I'll continue to do so. None of us holds all the answers in an increasingly complex field of digital and computational photography. I'm an old dog, but at least to this point, I'm eager to learn new tricks. As long as they're not just tricks, but actual useful developments to further this incredible art form. Anyone who rests on their laurels in this game will age out quickly. The fact is there are plenty of stupid old men, ones who've usually spent their lives denying they could learn from others. Most civilizations, at least those not in decline, search out the knowledge collected by and embodied in their elders. I'd like to ask these young curmudgeons who hurl barely coherent sentences designed, I guess, in their minds, inverted commas, to injure. I'd ask, do you have grandparents or other family members who are above, what, 21? What's the cutoff age for respect? At what numerical value are we to grant citizens of this dystopia you seem to inhabit intelligence, useful knowledge or wisdom? How about dignity? Is there anything those relics have to say that's worth listening to, let alone applying to your life? These fanatics are not photographers. Imagine them approaching someone only to find their, uh, again, what's the age when someone becomes ineligible to be the subject of a portrait? Oh my God, they have wrinkles that would break Photoshop. Run away! Sorry, that's a Monty Python reference that's, um, Old. Seriously, if you happen to be watching, I'm asking you, would you freak out if your dear old grandpa dissed your camera? I tell you, Sonny, them newfangled plastic cameras, they got nothing on a finely crafted oak Deerdorf. <laughs> and really, most haven't, notwithstanding eye autofocus. Not that you're going to listen to an old crock like me, but read some history. It's mostly a record of the wages of hubris. Speaking of history, photography is a great broad-based monument to wonder and beauty and light. Built by a diversity of men and women, over one and a half centuries of experimentation, evolution, and play. So, yeah, word up, dude. Photography began 150 years ago. Not with retro fashion accessory cameras made for hipsters. Yeah, stereotypes are dumb, aren't they? Nisi 4 Nietzsche was 62 or so with barely six years left to live when he created the oldest surviving photograph of a real world scene. View from the window at Le Gras, made in 1826 or 27. His former partner, Louis Duguerre, was a mere youth of 51 when he went public with his eponymous daguerreotype process. Then there was Henry Fox Talbot, whose concurrent experiments across the channel produced the ghostly reversed image of the Oriel Window, South Gallery, Laycock Abbey, around 1835. Admittedly, he was only pushing 40 when he announced his competing processes. Salted paper or calotype. Perhaps he was suffering from early onset dementia. God knows, he must have been completely senile by the time he discovered in the 1850s that gelatin treated with potassium dichromate, sensitizer, hardens on exposure to light. This formed the basis for the silver gelatin process that would underpin photography until digital photography arrived a, a wink of an eye or a snap of a shutter ago. There must be something wrong with me, because I truly do venerate people like Manuel Alvarez Bravo, who made the most exquisite platinum palladium prints of nudes made in his 60s, <laughs> dirty old man, lit by the magical desert light. He recorded the tumultuous history, that old irrelevant stuff, of his native Mexico, and he lived to be 
100. Imogen Cunningham. She's the wrinkly old lady uh, with the roller flex, peeking round the tree in Judy Dater's Imogen and Twinka at Yosemite, made in 1974. She was born in 1883, and lucky for us, she lived until 1976. During her lifetime, the old bat created images of such grace and beauty that even as a young lout of 30, I was brought to tears. Her images of flowers, portraits and nudes, the latter, often featuring her husband, Roy Partridge. They all seem to emit a kind of inner light. And that's something I've noticed about all the best prints I've viewed. She made photographs right up until she died at 96. She personified to me the soul of art. I absolutely worship the work of Jacques-Henri Lorty, who made extraordinary, playful photos in his childhood right through to his death in 1986 at 92. I'm so glad I went to a show of his photos, and that as a somewhat arrogant 34-year-old photographer, I at least had the humility to recognize the genius in Lartigue's transcendent work. Eugene Smith was an old man of 53 and a veteran war photographer when he traveled with his second wife, Aileen Miyoko Smith, to Minamata, Japan, where he exposed to the world the crimes of the Chiso Company. The methyl mercury emitted by the Chiso factory was poisoning the inhabitants of the fishing village. The ravages associated with methyl mercury poisoning are now known as Minamata disease. For his trouble, Smith was beaten within an inch of his life by Chiso hired thugs, nearly blinding him in one eye. His most iconic image from the project, Tomoko Uemura in her bath, documents Ryoko Uemura cradling her deformed daughter, Tomoko, in a traditional ofuro, Japanese soaking tub. The photograph, the, excuse me for a moment. The photograph, often referred to as the Pieta of Minamata, is the epitome of tenderness, compassion, shown in Ryoko's care and via Smith's eye, that had witnessed all the brutality and tragedy of war and yet who could still render the hope of humanity through the lens of his camera, whatever its make. Because he used uh, Zeiss contacts, Leicas, Nikon SLRs and rangefinders, Graflex, Kodak, Autographics, 4x5, Speed Graphics, Rolleiflex, Super, Icomat, you name it. Whatever he picked up between trips to the pawn shop, he was old and often broke towards the end of his life. Smith's epic darkroom sessions are famous, at least to those who take notice of such things. He worked completely enthralled to his craft, using boxes of paper to realize his vision in a single print. I've stood in front of such visions, original prints by these great masters. It's humbling, for me anyway, to witness, like a portal into the great wonder of history. I've been shaken to my core, as I say, brought to tears. For instance, by an E.J. Belloc portrait, a fashion shot or a celebrity portrait by Irving Penn, Richard Avedon, or David Bailey, an Ansel Adams landscape. This is photography's greatest strength, and it has no need of visual sloganeering. In fact, contrivance is its enemy. I don't know how to assure our work manifests this kind of inner beauty, but I suspect the possibility begins with sincerity. It certainly has no particular brand attached to it. You know the thing that comes through those two-dimensional works in three, even some kind of fourth dimension? their extraordinary intelligence, their passion. More than anything, compassion for their subjects, young and old. And just so you know, I'm not stuck in the past. I like the work of people like uh, Ryan McGinley, Hendrik Karstens, and Chris McGaw, among many other contemporary photographers, though I haven't seen original prints by them. I don't care what you think about me, but when you dismiss elders with shallow failed attempts at bravado, you degrade photography itself. 
No, uh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not setting aside the personal because your words are actually irrelevant, specks of nothing beside the great arc of history that is photography. After all, this is YouTube where more ridiculous ideas than this are floated every minute of the day and all. I'll tell you right now, it's not possible for someone who gets so bent out of shape about a camera review <laughs> that they feel they have to waste their time and hours hurling childish insults. It's not possible to do this and have the faintest idea what photography is all about. So here's a thought that takes no particular arcane skill to formulate for this person or persons with a hate on for the agent. And this is directed at them, not the thoughtful community that more often leave comments. Unless you've acquired the superpowers of your comic book heroes or, or science is advanced in the interim by smarter people than you or I, and some of them perhaps <laughs> of advanced age, you too will face the challenges of aging. And notwithstanding science that happens to be based on the study of generations of experimentation and records, there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. The question is, by the time you face those challenges, will you have developed the balls to survive its discomforts? Will you have developed the grace to accept decline and the will to survive? Will you have grown up? Okay, there I've had my say because I have this YouTube channel that I've worked hard to establish. Ultimately though, I want to thank Mr. Fruit Compote, let's face it, women are rarely this ridiculous, for inspiring this content <laughs> and cementing my decision to stick around. So this is a follow-up in a way to my recent uh, Should I Quit YouTube video as well. I hope those of you who like my content return to check out new videos. Hit that notification bell to be alerted and know that I really appreciate the mature conversations you've brought here. I was really heartened by the encouragement you offered during that recent period of doubt. And I appreciate all that I learned from you. Thank you, sincerely. I'm gonna try and incorporate some of your suggestions. I can't change my age, but I can maybe continue to bring you the kind of content you enjoy watching and I enjoy making. I'm not a quitter. I didn't throw in the towel when vindictive studio directors and account executives tried to break my spirit early in my commercial photography career. I didn't climb those great alpine rock and ice faces in my youth by quitting. I didn't cycle the Yukon, Alaska, and British Columbia into my 40s, and across France in a day in my mid-50s by giving up when things got tough. I didn't quit when cancer struck me in my fifth decade, twice. I didn't fold when a distracted driver changed my life and took away another of my passions, long distance cycling. I didn't quit last year when complications from the treatment that saved me from cancer almost killed me just a few months ago. I can't say how often or how consistently I'll post at this point, but I really can't think of a better fuck you to these cretins than to answer with the kind of endurance and longevity I've already brought to my photography career, my life in general, and to YouTube. Again, thank you so much to those of you who return regularly to this channel and who have helped to make it something I'm proud of. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you later, I hope.